from the students. How many of you are CE majors? Okay, how many of you are double E majors? How many are computer science majors? Okay, you think we get any of those? So what other majors left? Civil. No, we got civil computer mechanical. Okay. Okay. Well, I'm on the IT side, and what I thought I'd do is talk about some of the things that we got going on that I thought it was going to be more on the double E, but we'll change this. So one of the things that we're trying to do with technology is how do we basically make it the railroad, increase the efficiency of the railroad. And so we have several initiatives. One of the main initiatives that probably fit most in here would be the smart car development. So we have an initiative going on off because today, if you look at like hot box detectors, and this might go a little bit longer than five minutes by and by. So today, what we do today is we have hot box detectors or we have other sensors. The way it works is we put a sensor alongside the track or on the track and the train goes by and we read it. And when we started doing hot box detectors about, I don't know, 25 years ago, they had a hot box detector every 40 miles. And that was like, cool. Now we know that the temperature of the journal, and what it's measuring is measuring journal temperatures. Because what we're trying to prevent is the base of the wheel falling off the car and the car derailing. So what they found out is that at 40 miles, so that would give you a figure out, going 60 miles an hour, you get one reading every 40 minutes. Well then somebody said, wow, wouldn't it be neat if we go every 20 miles? And so then they put sensors in every 20 miles. So now we have basically, when you look at it, now we have the capability of, have, of getting a read or to get a trending data of every 20 minutes. Well, the problem is it takes about a minute and a half for the journal to burn off. Okay, so that's where we're starting to get this. So we came up and we said, okay, how can we get this? So one of the things that we're developing is how do we put the sensors that we have on the track, how do we get them near the source? And the source is the cars. So one of the things we're looking at is, as an industry actually, is putting basically bearing temperature, bearing sensors on there and the other one we're looking at is putting acoustic bearing acoustic wheel detectors on there which is basically just accelerometer because when you break it down you only got three types of sensors right you got an accelerometer you've got a strain gauge you got a thermistor accelerometer either measures it'll measure whatever sound or mechanical vibration so it also tells you so if you look at it you take those three sensors you can about measure anything we want to measure on the railroad the question is what combination do you put them together and that's where we get to use the mechanical and some of the other people because the double E's don't really know how to do that. So it's a good thing. So anyway, so, we, so now we have these sensors and now we have to put a processor out there. So we pretty well got it figured out how to make the processor and then for the double E's that aren't here, the other thing we're trying to figure out is how to make them all communicate up the train because you got to have a network that goes up the train. And with a lot of the technologies that are available today, the problem that we run into is that they're made for like they call a mesh, which is like you're talking to everybody else in the room. But what we really want to do is we want it to be a linear network. So you only talk to the one ahead of you, or maybe several ahead of you. But you don't talk outward, you talk in a linear environment. Well, none of the network topologies that there exist today support that. So, and that one actually falls into many things along, because we would like to use some of that same technology for putting sensors along the railway. But one of the other things we looked at is how can we put sensors and not to put communication systems on every one of them. So if you had a sensor here and a sensor here and a sensor and they could daisy chain up and communicate, that's the other thing we're looking at. But we're looking at doing on the other one. So we have this whole network topology and all the other ones. But one of the things we're running into is how do we power everything? And the energy management on this whole thing is really the Achilles heel of the whole project. Because the technology does not exist today, even though you have these massive cars, to basically, how do you put a energy harvester or energy energy generator on each one of the cars? Well, we haven't got that question answered, so I'm not looking for an answer. But that is the question we're answering. So that's one of the initiatives that we're going to go out and that we're doing, and that we're actually working with a lot of the universities because part of the problem is is we want people to think out of the box, you know, the what ifs, and so we like coming to the universities as the industry. We're coming to various universities looking for some solutions on that. So that's one of the things that's going on. We also do a lot of work, and I think all the railroads are, is we're trying to get a lot more data off the locomotives. Because you can only manage the efficiency of your fleet through data. And so one of the things we're also doing is how do we tie in 
to all the control systems. Some of them are new, some of them are even older than me. Okay, so, because we don't throw trains away. We do not throw locomotives away. I don't know where they go, but we don't throw them away. So, because you go out there and you go, really? You know, so one of the things is, is how do you get old, how do you get sensor data off old locomotives? That's one of the things we use a lot of the mechanical guys for, is they gotta go figure that out. We can bring the data in, but we don't know how to go necessarily. We don't have all the solutions for how do you get the sense, how do you get it off an of analog meter on our analog gauge? So those are some of the things we do. Um, some of the other things that's going on is uh, we do a lot of video and we're doing a lot of analytics and machine vision. And we're starting to look at how do you, do, how do you introduce machine vision and robotics into railroad operations. So one of the next kind of big things is what it'll probably be one of the next for railroad operations is how do we, today we have a lot of systems where that are real human intensive, where someone's got to go view a video and we're looking at saying, well, with the advent of faster computers, actually not even faster, they just run in parallel, but that's not the point. So as we, as we go down the road and we look at what more computing can I do in the field, on the site, like in the yards, can I use machine vision to help operate, do some of the yard operations? And that, or to do inspections. And so when we're looking at like, one of the things we're looking at is like, if I use, have the video and, and have it being processed, can we go through there and look for bad ladders, look for different play, things that you know on a car should be there and it's not. And so those are some of the things we're looking at too. And when we kind of look at the universities, we're saying, okay, you guys are really big on developing algorithms because that's what you guys do in your, a lot of your products. How do you go out there? So how would you guys do that? And that's kind of the things that we're looking at. When we come out to look at you guys and we bring in, those are some of the products we're looking at doing. Okay? Thank you. Yep.